So this is our final teaching in this series as we talk about finances. And one of the things we've done before is that we've said that, um, one of the things we've done before is that we've said that finances hang on three things. There's the mentality, there is the skill, and there's grace. So in this particular service, one of the things I want everybody to believe put forth is grace. We've spoken about the skill, the mentality. We're going to talk about the grace. So let me show you something quickly. Can I have the bicycle? Who is riding the bicycle today? Anyone riding the bicycle? Can you ride? Oh, good. So, yeah, you can, yeah, so, good. So, this is where we're going to start. So, the title of my teaching this morning is Injecting Grace into Your Labor Process. I don't know what your labor process is, but injecting grace into your labor process. So, this is, um, let me get another person. Where's the other brother helping me in the first service? Yeah, yeah, come, please. Good. Excellent. Injecting grace into your labor process. So, this is it. So, um, when we talk about finances, the Bible says when God made man, brother, you can stand on my right hand side here. You can go towards the back. Yeah. So the Bible says when God made man, Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says God made the heaven and the earth. And the reason why God made the heaven and earth was because man was meant to function in two dimensions. One was the spiritual dimension and one was the, what, the physical dimension. You know, but today when man fell, he began to function majorly in the physical dimension until Jesus Christ came and restored him spiritually. So, but what that means is that if man is meant to function in two dimensions, what you notice is this. When it comes to anything about man, there are two dimensions. There's a spiritual dimension and there's a natural dimension. And unfortunately, religion always tells us and say, just focus on the spiritual dimension and don't care about the natural dimension. And that's why people are heartbroken because they feel as if God has failed them. So you hear things like, you want a job, you want to get rich, you want to get married, pray, 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 pray. Fast, 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 fast. Worship so. And people do all those things and don't have the kind of results that they want to have. And the reason why is that you're meant to work on two legs. So my brother come, you know, run, run here, run here. Yeah, you, you see, was that easy for you to work and run here? That was easy. The reason why is that God designed him with two legs. One leg is the spiritual leg, the supernatural leg. And this leg is the natural leg. So once he has the two legs standing, it's fine. But what happens is this. Most people are running on what? On just one leg. What is the one leg? We're running on just the supernatural leg. So we're fasting, we're praying. But all the other things we have to like marketing, like savings, like money management, like being hardworking, we don't do that. So, we're just on one leg. So, let me show you. Go, go back, my brother. Go back, my brother. Run on the two legs. Just come on the two legs. You know, run. run. Yeah. That's like, go back. So, that's easy. So, you're walking on both the supernatural leg and the natural leg. But watch this. Run now. On one leg. One leg. Run. You know. You see. See. It, it's difficult. It's not as if it's not. It's difficult. So, you have people that are walking on one leg. So, they want to pray their way and fast their way, but they don't want to work. They don't want to get skills. Then you have the other people that are working so hard, but there's no God in the midst of it. There's no God in the midst of it. But the challenge that they are working on what one leg, it's just difficult. If I keep him like this for the next two minutes, he's going to start sweating. Because that's not the way God designed it. God designed not one leg. God designed what? Two legs. So the question is this. When it comes to your marriage, are you working on one leg or two legs? I know you're praying about your marriage, but are you becoming a better man or a better woman? I know you're praying about your health, but are you becoming a better man or a better woman? Are you exercising? Those are things you want to do. It's two legs. So thank you. God bless you. So let's go back to the bicycle. So this is a bicycle here. The bicycle is wonderful because I used to ride. I'm trying to go back to ride. You can mount the bicycle. The bicycle has two tires. The only way the bicycle works is what? Is if the two tires are working. So go, 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 go. Drive, drive. You know, ride. Yeah, right. Th that's really nice. It's able to ride because, because it's two. But guess what? If I deflate this tire or remove this tire, will it be able to ride the bicycle? No. Because the bicycle cannot work on one leg. So you need to ask yourself, when it comes to my life, where am I very strong? Am I very strong on the spiritual side and I need to work on the natural side? Or am I very strong on the natural side and I need to work on what? On the spiritual side. And if you're a couple, you need to sit down and ask your partner, where do you think I'm strong? What do I need to work on? Because if this is your bicycle of prosperity, if one tire is not working, it will struggle. People's lives are struggling because one of the key tires are not working. It's a bicycle. It's not a motorcycle. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. So let's, let's go ahead and let, let's go ahead and get to the word of God today. So 
That's a good time to clap. Hallelujah. So financial growth is a combination of both natural and supernatural principle. So a lot of people say, oh, I agree with you when you do the money cups. It's logical. I agree. But it's also the spiritual side of it, which is grace. <laughs> Listen to me. You know, <laughs> as much as I believe in skill mentality, there is a very powerful side, which is grace. Especially if you live in a third world country where there are several types of obstacles. You know, I was reading something on, 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 on online yesterday and it said there's a new risk. People need to do policy change risk as a new risk when you do business in my country. Because things can just change like that. And, and, and I'm telling you because when you have all those risks, it just makes things difficult. So let's read quickly. Let's read quickly. Let's read First Kings chapter 17 and verse 8. And I'm talking about injecting grace into your labor process. I, I really want you to believe that beyond your work, grace will be injected. Oh, that amen needs help. Amen. I need you to really believe. I need you. What does grace do? Let me show you what grace does. Kura bashata bakata namanda. Are you here? Who's going to help me? Is, is, okay. Nicholas, you want to help me? Yeah. So, let me put salt in this one. Fill this with salt. Make sure it has a lot of salt. This is egg, two eggs. You can stare. This is what grace does. This is what grace does. This is you. You can get a good... Sir, 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 let me tap him. You can get a good picture from there. Never. You're going to get a good picture from here. Improve the skill, bro. Yeah, improve the skill. Yeah. This is what grace does. Watch this now. This is you. This is you. This water is the world. As soon as it puts you in the business world, what happens? You sink to the bottom. Because there's no grace. But here, this is, this is the world. The world is the water. But we added salt. That's why it's white. What is salt? Grace. So we put you into the water. And guess what happens? You rise. So, people are wondering, both of us are in banking. We are sinking. You are rising. Both of us are in real estate. We are sinking. You are rising. Both of us are in Nigeria. We are sinking. You are rising. They say, why are you rising? The difference is this because we are both in the same place, but there's salt in my life. Praise God. There's salt in my life. There's grace in my life. They're wondering what's up with your finance. There's grace. There's grace. We both went to Stanford, but there's grace. We both went to Cambridge, but there is grace. We both went to school in Kenya, but there is grace. Grace makes the difference. Hallelujah. Out of, outside of grace, there is disgrace. But grace is what makes you stand out. So you need to make up your mind. What kind of life are you going to have? This one without grace? Or this one with grace? What kind of life are you going to have? This morning, my teaching is to teach you about this life. There's a life that is filled with grace. <laughs> are you ready this morning? Not only are we going to teach as we pray, we will minister grace to everybody. All of you online, I hope you're getting excited because there will be massive impartation of grace all over this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All of you online, I want to, be, I want to see your amen. Tell me where you're joining from. Invite all your friends to join. Some of you join, cannot join physically. Did you join online? Let them join online because I want everyone to get this grace. Things are so tough naturally in this situation, but grace will make us sleep over. That's why I'm teaching grace. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Let's go. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him and said, came unto Elijah the prophet and said, Arise, get to Seraphat that belongs to Zidon, and dwell there, for I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. So this widow woman had received instruction from God. The Bible says, And he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the woman was there gathering the sticks, gathering of sticks, and she called unto her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. The first thing I want to see is this. Even though God has given the word that he wants to bless you, God has given the word about your transformation, you have to take steps. You have to take steps. 
I'm saying so because a lot of people are not taking steps towards their testimony. God wants to do something big, but you have to run an advert. God wants to do something big, but you have to expand your business. You have to email your clients. You have to take steps. People feel that once I pray, I will just fold my hands and God will put it in my mouth. God told Elijah, he said, go to Zarephath. He said, go to Zarephath. Some of you is telling you start a new business. Some of you is telling you open a new store. Some of you is telling you expand to another region. Some of you is telling you have another stream of income. What is it telling you to do that you haven't done? He said this, and the Bible says, as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring my prey thee. As she was going to fetch the, um, um, the water, he called her back and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a muscle of bread in thy hands. Huh, that's what the problem is. <laughs> and the woman said, As the Lord leaveth, I have not cake, but a handful of meal in the barrel, a little oil in the cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in dress it for me, that myself and my son may eat it and we may die. <laughs> and you know, in this age of social media, if a pastor ever did this, it'll be all over social media. Pastor asks widow woman for last meal. Listen, before you condemn something, take another look. You know what was happening here? The mental picture of the future this woman had was death. It were one meal away from death. Elijah said, we cannot help her until we change our vision. We cannot help her until we change our mentality. We change the mentality of scarcity and death into what generosity and the future. He says, so Elijah began to say, let's change the picture. Let's change the picture. This is one of the reasons why God wants you to give. Because by giving, you change the mental picture. You are no longer the needy. You are now the haver. You are no longer the needy. You are not the blessed person. Glory to God. So see what the Bible says. The Bible says this. <laughs> so it changed the picture. Elijah said unto her, fear not. Go and do as you've said. F Why did he say fear not? Because what holds us back most of the time from doing what God wants us to do is fear. How many times does I have God inspired a thought, a business, an idea, has inspired a seed for you to sow and fear holds you back? He says fear not. Why do we fear? Because we've expressed previous failures. We've heard other people's story. So fear is very natural to the human experience. He said fear not. And the Bible says this, <laughs> she went and did and brought, she went, it said, fear not and do as thou hast said, but make me first the first cake first. Why did he say make me the cake first cake first? This is what Elijah was telling her. Not only do I want to change your vision, I also want to change your priority. It says, don't always think about yourself. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. God first. So he went ahead and made the cake. He says, Verse 14, for thus said the Lord, huh, that Elijah gave her a new vision. And that's what I do as a pastor. When you come to church, you, you, you begin to say things like, you know what, in my industry, things are not working so well. I understand that. But my work as a pastor is to give you a new vision from God and say, it's true that that's what you see, but this is what you can become. Glory to God. It's true that this country is hard, but guess what? It is in the darkest hour, light shines the brightest. <laughs> are you hearing me somebody the bible says light shines in darkness and darkness cannot do what comprehended he didn't say light overpowers darkness i know the things are tough globally but it is in the darkest hour light shines the brightest the biggest opportunity are in the worst crisis hallelujah the biggest opportunities are in the world crisis are in the worst crisis oh this is amazing because this is what I wanted to see. That the biggest opportunity. So I said, things are so tough. What are you looking at? Is it so tough they shut down Twitter? I feel bad about that. But what's the opportunity there? What's the opportunity there? Everybody's living the country. That means a few of us have more than enough. What's the opportunity there? One lady told me, one wonderful lady told me about how, it, just a story about how she was depressed and this and this. She has a child outside wedlock, has massive amount of influence and how she's scared. And I'm like, 
my daughter, you, she said, she told my story about how she's down. I said, this is amazing. I said, what is amazing? Because you have a beautiful story. He said, what's amazing about it? Because I see a book. He said, yes. And I see you selling this book for 5,000 naira each. And I see 100,000 people buying it because you have these huge followers on social media. I said, 5,000 times 100,000. Do you know what that means? He said, no. I said, that's 500 million naira. He said, ha, pastor. I said, because a lot of ladies can connect with your story. A lot of ladies had children outside wedlock. Were broken hearted by a man. When you write your story, the question is that, what do you see? That's why when you come to church, so we we're exciting. We're not exciting you. We're just saying that we understand what you see outside, but can you see something else? You know why? What you see determines where you go. <laughs> Glory to God. The Bible says, the barrel of milk shall not waste, nor the cruise of oil. Until the day the Lord shall send rain. And she went and did according to the word of Elijah. And the Bible says, And her and he and her and a house did it many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. It didn't run short. Neither did the meal of oil fail according to the word of Elijah. See, see, this is what I'm saying. That's what grace does. When grace comes on you, what should finish becomes extended. When grace comes upon you, the bad story becomes a testimony. What should wreck you becomes good. That's what grace does. Because grace knows how to flip around stories. People talk about flipping around houses. Grace flips around stories. That's what grace does. Who, who can believe that the last meal can sustain it for many years? That's the power of grace. And so, as we talk today, as I preach today, I want to really believe God. I don't know where your story is, where it's about your company. I don't know where your story is, but there can be a flip around. Maybe you've experienced some losses this year. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe your salary has been slashed by half. Maybe you can't see the opportunity. Maybe you're in a country where things are so tough. Maybe you're struggling with your migration papers. Maybe you're struggling getting married or getting pregnant. Grace can flip things around. Maybe the marriage is so tough and you're going to hell. Grace can flip things around. Look at this woman. One minute she was on the verge of death. He said, there's a last meal and I died. And the woman that said it was a last meal and she died became the person that will feed her. Did you notice something? There was a miracle you didn't see. Let me read verse 19 to you. And she went and did according to the sins of Elijah. And she and he and her house no longer her son. It became a house. As soon as the food was increasing, she called her uncle. He said, there's food here. As soon as the food was increasing, she was calling more people. He said, as long as you're here, a vision before was for me and my son. But grace says, extend the vision. Hallelujah. I know you're planning for just a small vision of a company in downtown Lagos Island. God says, think about Johannesburg branch. God says, think about the New York branch. He said, God, where will I get the money? Grace says, I will fix that for you. Because what grace does is this. When your hands can not reach, grace will reach there for you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So let's go in. Let's, let's, dig, let's, go, let's dive in. Someone says, how can you say, don't, don't you understand what, what the Naira and the dollar exchange is saying? Don't you understand what's going on in Johannesburg? Don't you understand what's going on in Canada? What's going on in Abuja? What's going on in Accra? I understand what's going on. But look at me two eggs <laughs> two eggs <laughs> hallelujah two eggs two eggs one is sunk one is floating hallelujah because one is under a condition called grace the other is under normal condition you are no longer under normal condition grace is all over your life can you say amen somebody grace is all over it you should be sinking because of what the president said. You should be sinking because of the country you're in. But grace is changing the story. Grace is changing the story. So question one, how do we receive grace? How do we receive grace when it comes to our finances? The first thing I want to talk about, why does God even bless at all? The reason why is that, well, you don't understand the purpose of God's prosperity, you abuse it. I've seen people that got richer and took a second wife. I've seen people that got richer and used their money to oppress their friends and the poor. I've seen people that got richer. So why does God bless? The first thing is this. One, we are blessed to be a blessing. That's why God blesses. us. Genesis chapter 12 verse 2. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Can I have my pipes and buckets? It says, I will make thy name great and thou shalt become what? Thou shalt become what? 
So say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Thank you. There are always different kinds of Christians. What kind of Christian are you? There's the bucket Christian. Who is the bucket Christian? This is who you are. You only store God's blessing in the pocket. That, that's who you are. All your blessing. And no matter how big your bucket is, you have a limit. Because all you can contain is all you can contain. But guess what? They are the pipe Christians. Who are they? They allow God to flow through them. It's a flow. Who gets to who gets more water flow? The bucket or the pipe? Because the limit of the bucket is 50 cl or 50 liters. Can't go more than that. But the pipe, it's flowing. As long as you can have someone you can pour on, God says I can flow through it. As long as you can have someone to pour on, God says I can flow through you. Why does God bless people to be a blessing? God doesn't want you to be a bucket that stores the blessing. God wants you to be a pipe. When you're a bucket, all the blessing is for you. It's just in your life. It shows in your life. When you're a pipe, your blessing begins to show other people. Through your pipe, God blesses people. Through your pipe, God changes lives. That's what happened. God changes lives. Which one are you? Are you a bucket? Are you a bucket or are you a pipe? Which are you? When you're a pipe, you understand not all the money that comes to me is my money. Some is for someone's school fest. Someone is to help rebuild the village school in our village. So, so you know, understand that this pipe is to help to send someone, so, so, someone pay someone's medical bills. You know, this week, by the grace of God, you know, we're giving out four million. I mean, just two weeks ago, we gave out 2.5 million just for those that can feed. This week, we're giving 40, 43 entrepreneurs a hundred thousand naira each to start a business. Someone says, Oh, wow. You know, you people give a lot. I said, because we're the lights. That's, a, that's what it means to be a pipe. It's never about us. It's about other people. Question, with all the wealth you have, how does it show other people? This is in a significant way. So why, why does God bless us? Number one, because we, we, we're blessed to be a blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. See what the Bible says here. Act the 20 verse 35. So why does God bless? We're blessed to be a blessing. So guess what? Any water that does not flow begins to stink. Have you noticed flowing waters never harbor mosquitoes? Have you noticed that? Any water that stays is what harbors mosquitoes. When the blessing of God doesn't flow in your life, the blessing begins to stink. All of a sudden, you have all this craziness because the blessing is not flowing. The second thing is this. Act chapter 20 verse 35. He says, says, I've I've shown you all those things. How so laboring you ought to support the weak. He says, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. What did Jesus Christ say? He said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I didn't say so. He says, remember the words of the Lord Jesus. The next thing is this. Why are we blessed? We're blessed to sponsor the gospel. You know, I, I think about terrorism. I think about many agendas in the world and how people pull resources to push an agenda and god is saying that i'm looking for people that will push gospel as the agenda zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 see what the bible says he says quiet saying toss yet a lot of hosts my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad my cities through prosperity shall be what spread abroad he says the way my city will be spread abroad is through prosperity everybody seems to push an agenda do you know there are people that behind jihad there are people when you hear about things like boko haram and you see all the ammunition they have you wonder where do they get the money from because they have sponsor if people can sponsor um children's sexuality they can sponsor drugs they can sponsor sex who is going to sponsor the gospel god needs to raise you and i you and i i said the first reason god wants to bless you is to bless other people there are ladies that must be in this place i said as long as i leave ladies will not have to sell their money to get by because god will use me to give them loans of hundred thousand five hundred thousand one million five million ten million if i'm the person i'm speaking about say amen, amen. Some of you must go back to your village and say, as long as I'm in this village, nobody's going to go as ourselves to Lagos. Because every child will, deserve, will go to an education. Every child will deserve an education. And they must get an education. We will go back and build them good, village, um, good, good, good education. 
But the same way, there are people that, that we must be passionate about the spread of the gospel. The Bible says the, the, the voice of the wise poor man will not be heard because he's poor, although he's wise. Meaning that God needs you to be rich so that your voice can be heard. Some of you must begin to say, oh, the church plant wants to do it in Naja. How much does it cost? I want to pay for the church plant. Oh, I heard that you're reaching students. How much does it cost? I want to reach students. Oh, I heard that, you know, I heard that you want to start a church in Abuja. How much is how, a church? I want to do that because my job is to sponsor the, the gospel. The third reason why God blesses is this. God blesses for us to have a great life. First Timothy says, he gives us everything to richly enjoy. Another reason why God blesses is this. God blesses to reflect his goodness. God sometimes just wants to tell people that, hey, that guy is my son. That, daughter, that girl is my son. This is the way he says it. He said, this day I will make the difference between them that serve me and them that what? Serve me not. So, all of you, both of you went to Stanford, but you are Stanford and blessed. <laughs> yeah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Stanford and blessed. They are just Stanford. Stanford is a good platform, but you are blessed. And they wonder why are things sinking for us and things are going up for you. And you say, The problem is this I'm the salt of the earth. I'm not just here, there's salt of my life, there's grace of my life. What does the grace of God do for you? Some, let me just say something quickly. Number one, you know what grace does for you? Grace gives you illumination, revelation. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. that When the grace of God comes upon your life, it will affect the way you think, which is huge. Paul said that I am what I am by the grace of God, that that grace has transformed me. I, you know, I, I read the story of Bishop Oedipo, and this man was so poor, but when he found the light of God's word, he said, I found it. Grace opens eyes. Listen to me. If you're struggling, you can't have light and struggle. Uh -uh. When you have light, don't struggle. The Bible says light shines in darkness. Darkness is not fighting light. He said darkness cannot comprehend it. Darkness submits to light. So the reason why the struggle is there is that there's a level of illumination you need to have. You don't have yet. Hallelujah. What does grace do? Some, I don't know if you help people like you counsel or mentor people or coach people you will notice that some people that no matter what you tell them they can't see it who knows what I'm talking about what the grace does that grace just opens their mind I'm telling you and you know the way sometimes there's, no, there's nothing you can say they just can't see it hey grace is so powerful hey to just open your eyes you're like my god you know you what you ask yourself have you noticed among your siblings how come you think differently that's the work of grace they want but we all grew up together what happened to your grace sir? grace the apostle says this thing paul is talking about we don't even know where he got it from we even saw jesus he didn't see jesus grace paul says how did i get it he says i am what i am by the grace people wonder why do you take this part but you're always in front grace sir. grace just has a way of positioning you ahead of other people somebody say hallelujah the second thing is this what does grace do grace enlarges your value capacity jacob was serving laban all of a sudden god showed him a dream in a dream god gave him a concept that today we know as genetic modification it says when the animals are meeting put this in front of them it will alter their genes we'll believe this way back all of a sudden your capacity to add value is multiplied see you do presentations you don't know even why you said what you said you don't know why you put that extra statement you don't know why you did that grace just begins to direct you it just begins to direct you like wow wow my god your kids just do so well because grace is reflecting And let me tell you something. 
you are in a ministry that there is grace. I'm telling you. And, and grace is, you've been here, there's grace. I'm telling you, the most ridiculous things happen in this church. I'm telling you, the most ridiculous things happen in this church. One lady walked up to me, maybe a 35 year old. She said, you know, it's like you want to tell you that I made a million dollars. So, you know, I, I shared it. It was, it's a pastor, you made a mistake. I said, I, I never said I got a deal of a million dollars. I made a profit of a million dollars. I said, wow. I said, a million, just like that, in this recession. He said, I, I didn't even have to struggle for it. It just came my way. Another person was sharing with me. This was on Wednesday. And this person has a huge job that pays several tens of millions and has a business side to it. He said, Pastor, after the next level prayer, he said, I want to tell you something. They said, I, I got a job uh, from the UK company. I said, and to be long shot, I think they're paying about 200,000 pounds. 200,000 pounds every year. I said, oh, praise the Lord. He said, Pastor, why are you saying praise the Lord? You told us to dream big. I said, yes. He said, I told them I could not work for them because I can't leave my business and work for someone. And this is my own job. I still like that I don't work for them. I said, so what happened? He said, they offered me the whole job as a part-time job also. And say, you can keep your job and your business. And you can also keep this job. I said, my goodness. In this same Nigeria, when all that said is a casting now, when all that said is not working, Listen, when they say things are not working, I go back to my table. You don't know who I am. <laughs> this is me. This, this is not me. This is me. <laughs> when others say there's a casting now, I say there's a lifting up. When others say there's a casting now, I say there's a lifting up. When they say there's no money, I say there's too much money. <laughs> there's too much money. If they are cutting soap, I'm cutting grace. Hallelujah. If they are cutting soap, I'm cutting grace. Hey, glory to God. I'm cutting grace. Hallelujah. If they are looking for one Shango man or one, uh, what do they call them now? Witch doctor or a Susaya or they are wearing some uh, witch item. I know the name of Jesus. I know the power of the name. I got the power of the word and it's working for me. Someone say amen. I wish Christians can be bold like people that don't know God. You know those guys that, that caught somebody? Let me take you somewhere. You should tell them, let me take you to an LP. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. I share with you a testimony. Just before the service started, this doctor, how should give a testimony of $200,000? See, let me, let, oh my God. What, 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 what does grace do? Grace attracts resource. Resource. I'm telling you, you will just be in the right conversation. You'll be in the right connection. One of them, I said, we have wonderful testimonies in this ministry. That's why if you attend this church, grace is spreading on you already. Well, someone told me, he said that, there's something about attending harvesters. I just joined and things are working. He said, six months after my mindset changed, I said, it's a grace. It's a grace. Get ready. What does not happen for begin to happen? Because God needs to use you as a specimen of answered prayers. <laughs> Declare with me, say, I am a reference point of answered prayers. Oh, wow. Some of you, can I prophesy on you? <laughs> Some of you, in a short time, you are going to call us to come and pray by your companies. When we get there to be 1,000 employees, when we get there to be an international office in New York, international office in Beijing, in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone says, Pastor, do you know do you know my background? Your background doesn't matter because of this. <laughs> because of grace. <laughs> I, I know you came from a ratchety, ratchety background. <laughs> but it doesn't matter where you came from. It's what you're connected to. <laughs> the fact that your your fact that your background is low does not mean your back should be low. <laughs> what determines is your future. The devil is the one in the background. God is into about future. He said, Remember not the former things. He said, Consider not the things of old. He said, behold i do a new thing don't judge yourself by your past judge yourself by your future god says as far as your eye can see i don't know what i'm talking to let me talk to those on this side he said as far as your eyes can see in that real estate business in the oil and gas in consulting in it he says i will give unto you in the name of jesus receive it i said receive it i said receive it 
you will be in the right conversations your mind will be on the minds of the right people for no reason they'll be thinking about you as i'm speaking this moment everyone that god has destined to help you begin to take steps towards you they begin to take steps towards you begin to take steps towards you begin to take steps towards you in the name of jesus oh my father my father my father my father the same way that the woman of Zarephath could not refuse the request of elijah though he was a last meal anywhere you have sent requests anywhere we have sent proposals they can't refuse you any longer grace comes upon it grace comes upon it shout a believing amen all those of you online i want to see you tap your amen hallelujah someone shout grace. grace someone shout grace. grace please have your seat one minute let me tell you a testimony in this church one brother in this church this was i think how we made his first maybe 30 million there about and this was a while ago when when money was money when when it was money he told me he said i was in the house and the lord spoke to me go to this restaurant just imagine the restaurant is cactus go, gonna have lunch in this restaurant i'm like lord i have challenges all you want me to do and do let up go and eat listen to me god is a good god sometimes he will tell you go and go go, go and dig us go and get a spa so then god says go and get a spa yes because god is a good god god all god cannot all the time be saying pray fast faith fast. what about other things in your life god will tell you that hey go to Go to Mauritius and get a one week break. That's the voice of God. You know why you don't hear such things? Because the God you know is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. He only tells you consuming things. No, sir. My God is good and kind to me. Glory to God. Didn't you read about Jesus Christ? You can say, hey, guys, come, let's go and rest. Let, let's go to five star hotel and rest. Too so much of me, let's go and rest. One of those is I'm hoping I'll be so blessed. Buy a ticket for all our pastors. Say, let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just go. First class, just book out the first class. Uh, we're just going to rest. I, say, I want to be a pastor now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this guy, the Lord told him, one of our leaders, he said, go to the restaurant. As he went there, he bought his food. And there was this other white person on the other table. He was not paying attention. But as he was eating, the white man banged the table and went, boom, a big bang. And he said, what is the problem? And he just felt like, what's the problem? He said, all you Nigerians are the same. He said, why did you say that? He said, well, my older brother is the chief, like in charge of procurement for one of the biggest oil companies in Nigeria. He said, but by the law of the company, I can't get a contract from him. So I have a Nigerian partner that gets a contract, executes and pays me off. But the guy have not been stable. I've been here for two hours. He's not come. He's meant to give me some money in time pass. You know, he's not giving me some, the money. We're meant to have a meeting. He's just done this. And the guy said, I'm so sorry. And this and this and this. And by the way, I do procurement. And that's what he does. And I said, you do procurement? But that's exactly what this guy does. Won't you fail? He said, no, I want to fail you. They did their first contract. I think the first contract, he made about 40 million from it. All you have, that's grace. You are just in the right place. At the right time in the right circumstance under the right conditions i say grace people say grace people glory to god that's what grace does grace attracts resources let me let me let me close so the question now is this how do i how do i receive because that's what we want to do tonight all of you online how do i receive the first thing is this you need to believe you only become what you believe let me tell you something if all you have is what you've worked for you're limited what god wants you to do is this god wants all you have to be what you worked for with grace so you know what i believe i just believe that good things happen to me i just believe that so much i believe that God can prosper. See, the person that believes in this way is Abraham. Abraham told the president of his time, he says, hey, don't give me any money because you're going to start making up your mouth and say, I made Abraham rich. I'm so confident in God's belief in my life that God can make me rich. Hey, see, Abraham does, I don't know how you are. You may have no 
dime in your pocket. You say, I know God has done it. The Bible says, and how do I know? This is how I know God has done it. Watch this. When the curse of poverty came on the earth, you know when it came on the earth? Genesis chapter 3. What did God do? The Bible says, God cursed them and said the earth will bring forth what? Tongues and what? Tissues. Tongues and tissues. He says, when he cursed it, the earth will bring your tongues. Do you know what happened on Calvary? There was an exchange. On Calvary, as Jesus was going on the cross, a Roman soldier thought he wanted to hurt him. He didn't realize he was fleeing scriptures. He took a crown of ten and pierced it on his head. And when he pierced on his head, Jesus said, I receive it because this was your poverty. This was your financial hardship. As he bled, he said, I bleed away your poverty. I bleed with your hardness. And that's why the Bible says, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich for our sake, it became poor. That we, through his poverty, that we may become rich. Listen to me. My wealth is not attached to a location. It's because of who I am. I am blessed. I am blessed. And let me say something to you. When do you know you're blessed? Not when you have the millions in your account. Because you become what you believe. Even when there's nothing, you know I'm blessed. Oh, you know I'm blessed. I'm just starting the company, but it's blessed. I'm just starting out the life. I'm blessed. You know why? Because what I become is what I believe. I'm not in the general class. I'm in the blessed class. I'm not amongst other people. I'm in the blessed category. I'm chosen and selected. Somebody say amen. I'm not at this advantage. Great how you see that is in me. See, you don't understand. This, you know, I talk about mentality. This is where I got my mentality from. Oh, I got my mentality. I, I told <laughs> oh my God, there are things we want to do in church. And I would say, we don't have the funds. I say, I understand our budget can supply it. But the Lord, there is the Lord. There is the Lord. There is the Lord. Some of you, you know, your wife says, I like the house. Say, hey, see how much? You have to make room for El Shaddai. <laughs> you have to make room for El Shaddai. Stop shrinking your vision. Stop shrinking your business. Expand your tent. Uh, enlarge your coast. Uh, make some room for El Shaddai. You know who he is? Uh, he's the one that opens the door and no man can shut it he's the one that shuts the door and the grandfather of the grandfather of the grandfather of the person that will open it has not been born he says I open before you a door that no man can shut if you please say amen, amen. someone say what do I know wrong question look at the cup again look at the cup again I'm meant to know nobody he says I have no Godfather but I have got the father <laughs> hey they say I have no Godfather but I have got the father hallelujah he said when men said there's a casting down he said you will say there is a lifting up I'm lifted I'm lifted I don't know what's happening in your country but I'm lifted I don't know your industry but I'm lifted I don't know your career but I'm lifted he said promotion coming up from the east from the west but from God the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want I attack resources everywhere there's grace on my life the first one is to believe the second one is this second chronicle chapter 6 verse 7 let me tell you something this belief is very key because even people that are not born again understand the law of attraction. So what God does is this. God tells me to tell you something to believe. Hoping that by the time you believe it, you can attract. Because it's what you believe you become. Someone says, I'm reaching for a rich boyfriend. You know why? Because in your heart, that's the only way you're going to become rich. It's, fun. it's good if he's rich. Of course, he needs to take care of you. But that's not my purpose. Because even by myself, I did. Praise God. I did. Someone says, except I leave this country, I can't make it. That's why you can't make it. Because you have said, except what? I leave this country, I can't make it. You know, the, you, listen, you don't understand. Joseph was a slave and the Bible says Joseph was blessed as a slave. When you see nothing in your pocket and say, Father, I thank you that I'm blessed. Let me say something to you. When I said teaching things like this, let me tell you how I used to eat. I would go to the restaurant and ask for rice. And they would say, meat or fish? I said, none. They say, why? I said, that's all I can afford. Just rice. 
and someone <laughs> one time someone said pastor and you'll be eating this i'll be saying i'm blessed he said where is the blessing i said i'm like a pregnant woman when i'm pregnant you don't see it but give me some time give me some time that which is inside will come out people are looking at you and they're like where is it where is it where is it give me some time when it's one week pregnancy we don't see the pregnancy two weeks we don't see it. three weeks we don't see it. one month we don't even see it even two months we don't see it. but from three four months we start seeing a bump they think that he ate and his stomach is full think whatever you say eight nine months it's big they say can she deliver think whatever you say but when the time is still bible says as soon as zion traveled she brought forth as soon as zion traveled she brought forth don't worry i'm pregnant right now i'm carrying i'm carrying destiny mock me all you can uh, laugh at me all you can uh, say all you can but i'm carrying destiny i'm carrying destiny i'm carrying destiny i don't know who i'm talking to they can look down at you it doesn't matter i'm carrying destiny very soon i will deliver save it oh god in destiny let me tell you something the most important opinion of of your life and not your friends it's god and you i can tell you stories after stories i said i know you're gonna fail someone have told me stories and stories look at us here today look at us here today we don't even look sometimes when i tell the stories people cannot even believe that this story existed. We're going to buy this property in a full-fledged prosperous season. And we came together and said, we cannot afford it because there was no finance. I told the pastor, right? I said, you know what? He said, let's take a bank loan to buy it. I told the pastor, I said, that's very intelligent. But I believe we can buy this property without a bank loan. And you know, some very smart pastors, not to look down at them. One of them told me later and said, I just said, huh, let's see. I'm a financial expert. I know the figures. We can't. Long and short. When there was prosperity, we couldn't afford to buy it cash. It was in COVID. We paid for it cash. What change? If it's too big for you, it's a job for El Shaddai. And you know, we bought this property over, we bought this property cash over half a billion. Yeah, over half a billion. I didn't say million, over half a billion. And guess what? This is one of the few churches who buy property for over half a billion and we didn't raise an offering once. We just came and just say, hey, church, bought. We paid. You know what I'm telling you this? If God, what, where is God more interested in a physical property or you? If God can sponsor a physical property, what about you? He will do it over and over again. But can you believe it? Let's close. Oh, let's close. How to access grace? So the first thing. So what do you believe? See what? So what they say? So when they said we couldn't buy it, what they said was a fact. But what I believe was the truth. What do you believe? No man can, if nobody helps me, I can't go forward. That's true, it will happen to you. Do you believe that very soon? Oh, I remember when I was 21 years old, I wrote that my first one millionaire is giving to the gospel. I didn't even have 100,000. But you know why I wrote that? Because I believed that one day I will give my first one million. I wrote recently, my first one million dollars is given. Because I believe that one day I will have it the same way I had the other ones. You know, in, 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 in my room I have all these checks I write down about the things I believe. So recently, I didn't know what happened. The checks, the, the glue had become weak. So they had fallen off. So my wife had taken the checks and put in the drawer beside my bed. So I was checking some document. I saw the checks. I said, oh God. Hey, this was prayer point some years ago. Hey, see how small they are now. Hey, I had to tear them and write new ones. 
I believed, even though I didn't see it. What do you believe? What's your account? Believe bigger. Hallelujah. So the next thing is, so, so <laughs> let's rush. Believe. The second one is affection. The second one is affection. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 7 and 7. Second Chronicles rather, chapter 6 verse 7. How do you receive belief? The second one is, so today as I begin to declare on you, believe. The second one is, so I'm going to six verse seven. It says, "Now he was in the heart of thy fa- of David thy father's house to build me a house for the name of the Lord." I'm rushing. Slow down. Second Chronicles chapter six verse seven. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said unto Moses, unto David my father, for as much as it was in your heart to build me a house, you have done well. God says, "Where is your heart?" See, some people's vision for finance that, hey, if I make money, ha, if I hammer, hey, 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 they will hear. You are not ready. Because you are thinking of painting the town red, showing everybody. See, David, where is your heart? David said, my heart is to build God a house. Where is your heart? Kingdom wealth, supernatural prosperity is entrusted. These are spiritual laws. These are spiritual laws. This is how the Bible says it. Let, let, let me show you quickly. Um, Luke chapter 16 verse 11. He says, If you have not been faithful and righteous, mama, my mama, we will commit to your trust. Take note of that. Look, can you be fast at the back, please? Luke 16 verse 11. Look at what it says. If you therefore have not been faithful and righteous, my mama, who will commit to what? To what? God says, the thing with kingdom wealth is that I'm looking for people to trust. I'm not looking for professionals. Why did he think he told Abraham, go and kill your son? If he wanted his child killed, he would have told him, kill him. He didn't want him killed. He wanted to say, how far can you go? What can you release? How far can you go? How can I trust you? Why do you think he tells us so tight? How can I trust you? How far can you? Will you always put me above you? He says, look at what he says. Therefore, if you have not been unfaithful in unrighteous mammon, I know you know unrighteous mammon money. He says, we will come into what? Your trust. Kingdom abundance is based on trust. And where does God see trust? What you do at the current level of what you have is how God is judging your trust. God says, can you help pay that person's school fees? Can you help do that and pay for that other thing in the church? I said, no, I, I'm not, I, I have other bills. And God said, I, I want to trust you. How many of you have failed God's financial test when he asks you to give? How many of God failed God's monthly te- tithe tests? You failed it. I know you are praying, but can God trust you? Because you have to decide either to be what? A pipe or a bucket. Buckets are not trustworthy. They store, they can all they have. They store all they can, can it, sit on it, and that's it. The pipe says, let me keep flowing through me. Someone says, yeah, that's the problem with the rich. You'll be surprised. The poor are more stingy. How do I know? I help a group of people that are very poor class in my area. One of them came to tell me about the other one. said, sir, don't give that other person money. He has a girlfriend. I wondered, and all of them sleep on the road. I said, wow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the, last one, the last one, be seed-minded. Two things, be seed-minded. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24. And this is where it gets tough. Belief. The second one is what? Affection. Let your affection be for God. Don't, don't pursue money, pursue God. Other one is what? Be seed minded. Proverbs 11, verse 24. He that scattereth, this is what it says. It says, He that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there's he that withholdeth much that is mean and it tends towards what? Poverty. And look at the next verse. It said, The liberal soul is what? He is made fat. And he that watered shall also be what? Watered. I, I want to read to you the message version. This is very powerful. Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 24. This is what it says. Message Bible. It said, The world of the generous gets larger and larger and larger. He said, the word of the stingy gets what? Smaller and smaller. There's, a, there's something about stinginess that makes you contract. There's something about generosity that makes you enlarge. God says, 
if I want to enlarge your world, I begin to ask you to give because I want to enlarge your world. It says, he the watcher shall also be watered. There are five types of giving. The first one is this giving to the there, there are five types of giving in the Bible. I want to talk about it. The first one, give it to the poor. Give it to the poor. Very essential. It's essential to give to the poor. Giving to the poor, very powerful. Bible says he the give to poor lends to God. The second one in, in the Bible is this Ephesians. Talk about giving to parents, both spiritual parents and physical parents. Many of you are here. You must not let Mother's Day, Father's Day go and not send a gift to your dad, to your mom, to your father-in-law, to your mother-in-law. Bible says when you give to your parents, it says it will be well with you. And not only physical parents, God, Bible speaks about giving to your spiritual parents, your pastors. Maybe Pastor DJ, Pastor Foger, Pastor John, whoever pastors you. It says you must be learn to give to them. One last you give, one last you send a check to your mom. One last you send a check to your pastor. Say, I want to be blessed. Just a bowl of rice. I want to be blessed. And God says, I want to expand it. The third kind of giving is this. Given, given your tithe, which is 10%. And the fourth kind of giving is this. To kingdom project. What is kingdom project? There will be projects in the house of God from time to time. And the fifth kind of giving is this. Giving. Giving sacrifice. And what is sacrifice? Sacrifice is that kind of seed. It's a special, sometimes people call it seed faith. When you want something to happen, it's this baby you're targeting. It's this breakthrough you're targeting. You want a response. You use your finance like it's faith seed. And you say, Lord, I take it and lay down. The Bible speaks of a king. And the counsel of sacrifice is throughout the Bible. The Bible speaks of a king. Hallelujah. The king was losing battle. This was an idol worshiper king. You know what it took? He said, go and bring my firstborn. He took the firstborn and burnt him at war. Throne apparent, the air apparent, sacrifice. We can't do that. That's callous. But the principle is there. Sacrifice. All of you that are married, you know there's something that your husband or wife can do for you that will forgive them all their sins. Yes or no? All those things are sacrificial. There's something you can do that will be as if you want to act. God will say, see, if God is going this way, you will do it. God will say, ah, ah, ah. What are you trying to do? Who asked you? Ah! On this child issue. On this marriage issue. On ah. The Bible says, one woman showed the last coin. Jesus saw all the people that gave. He paid attention to the one that threw in the last coin. And the last thing is this. Be consistent and grateful. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be consistent and grateful. Verse 9. This is what it says. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap everything. Now the challenge is that most people do these things haphazardly. It's never what? Consistent. It's less people not be weary. People, people tithe. They will tithe this month because you spoke about it. What about next month? They will give a sacrifice. What about next month? How many of you are here that God is convincing you of something that you refuse to do? He said, don't be weary of it this morning as we pray what I want to believe God is grace grace to be a pipe grace that will make difference everything you do and this morning also I want to challenge people there are many of you that would need to take your first step in tithing but all of us should take our first step in sacrifice I announced it during NLP and I told them I just told them I said I feel we should give sacrifice but I just feel as if if people outside the church are giving sacrifice what about us within here and say, Lord, I release this because of what I'm believing God for. Let's stand up and pray.